What is going on? Welcome back to the channel. It's your man Hendel here, co-host Brodney. It is a wonderful, wonderful weekend, Brodney, especially mm -hmm. in the sports world. Yes, it is. Like there is a certain sector of people that are extremely happy right now. We shall get into that later. But today, you know, we're going to kind of expedite things a little bit because I guess WrestleMania is on right now. It is indeed. And there are still a large number of people that still believe in a fake sport. So... I'm not trying to hold too many. No, it's not, it's not even believing in a fake sport. You know that like everything besides sports that you watch is fake, right? You still, yeah. you still entertained by it, right? I mean, I don't have. I used to love wrestling. Oh, okay. I don't. No, I don't no, have no. anything against yeah, it. No, but, I got it. But like my no, 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 no. My only problem is when somebody wants to argue about, hey, my guy's been champion for ten straight years. Well, it was written that way. So, hmm. what do you? That's a, that's a little silly. That's exactly. Ric Flair always won, no matter who he went against. I never. No, 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 no. He did not always win. He couldn't be eighty-five time champion if he always won. He had to lose eighty-four times. Okay. That was later in life. Many, I don't know how many times he actually lost, but it was a lot. That was later in life. I'm talking he about won going every to other. He won every other fight. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Not a real big, not a real Ric Flair fan, but I did love the documentary and I do respect him as a person even more, especially after the fact yeah, you realize they were just playing awesome. characters. I listen, back in the day, back in you know the 1990s when I was young and I was a baby, I thought wrestling was real. Well, it could have been it could have been it could have been, been the early 80s. I was gonna I was gonna let young go because all right, <laughs> when you were a baby, huh? Yeah, you know, that was, that was younger. It was, it was, it seemed real to us because we didn't know any better. You know, we only watched it once a week. We didn't get all this inside access and all these other things. So, you know, wrestling was what it was. But you know, and it just makes sense that the crowd noise would would carry you through, you know, and, and would give you that lift, that energy that you need to fight back. I mean, like Hulk, like Hulk Hogan. Uh, he's a real American. I mean, real Americans, they, they don't they don't just lay down like that. With the Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate Warrior sucked. Okay, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> he got his energy from shaking the ropes, and this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Now, we're now, now hulking up. That's real. Oh, really? So getting punched yeah. in the face gives you more energy to to beat. No, someone. no, no. See, see, see. It's because you haven't watched in a while. He doesn't get punched in the face until after he hulks up. <laughs> you know, it's the Hulk of Maniacs. They got to give him that energy, and then he looks up and he's like, "Go ahead, and hit me. Watch, watch what happens." And they punch him in the face, and nothing happens. And then he gets up and he's walking around and they're still hitting him. And he's like, I can't even feel it because all my Hulkamaniacs are out there. But the dudes are racist. I don't know why we're talking about this. All right. Because I just I was wondering how, you know, I'm a prime fit athlete mm -hmm. and I get a little thigh meat to my chin and now I can't get up. Like, I just wasn't understanding that. But, you know, I digress. Let's move on. We are here to talk about the Baltimore Ravens and all other things that are going on. In <laughs> what do you mean? Wow. Incredible. What you said we're not here. You said you you said it has to be a quick show. So we're gonna try to keep it to 15 to 30 minutes tonight. I do apologize. The WrestleMania's on. Apparently, that's a big deal. Um, with the trailer park community. I don't know. I haven't watched wrestling Bret years. Hart is but that guy. Bret Hart, I love uh, I used to hate Bret Hart with the Hart Foundation, but I loved him when he went solo. That was my guy, but I couldn't stand him at first. All right, let's see who we got up in here. We got Brandon Bazell. He says first, we got Dwan 100, second. We got my man, uh, Killer Cam. Hola, what's going on? We got Coach Evans in the house. How you doing, Coach? We will see you tomorrow night because we're streaming tomorrow night as well. Are you sure? Because there remains little and less to talk about. We'll make something. 
coach always finds something for us to speak about. I don't. So. I, I tell you, I don't like it because the times where there's the least to talk about are our longest shows. Somehow, I don't it, understand it. Somehow it is. So you know, we don't have much to talk about tonight. So let's not be here for an hour and a half like you no, try no. to keep the show every week, Rodney. Okay. Every week I say, every week okay. I start the show off and say, listen, okay. we're going to try to make yeah, it. No, 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 move on. Go ahead. You, 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 you're stalling What's right up, now. Man? Keep it moving. What's going on, Shug? How you doing? The vegan calling something mm-hmm. fake comical. First of all, I was just about to point people to your direction to come watch what you got going on right now. Forget you, bro. What's going on, Jeremy? How you feeling? He says the NFL does have the Mahomes script. No, he's just he's just that good. I, I hate to say it. He's, he's, that, he's that good. Jerry Green's in the house. How you feeling? We got Tanja Bowman. How you doing, Tanja? You missed out. Missed out. What's going on, Yolanda B? She says, good evening, Rogue family. We got Danity. Danity, you're bluffing. So yes, Bradney the missing, but Danity the bluffing. Like, Danity, Dan- the Danity bluffing. I don't want to hear you call somebody missing. You, 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 you disappeared off of everything for like two months. How long did you leave Hendo on not red? <laughs> no, no, no. She left me on red. No, 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 no. She, she left you on not red first oh, and yes, then red. <laughs> then she left it on red and was like, I saw it, but I didn't saw it. Then she, you know, she 52, she gave us a 52 fake out last night. I'm going to leave that right where it is. But you know what, Danity? Oh, I heard about you that know, too. You know what I'm saying? But Danity, you still, you still my homie. And you know what? I'm glad you came out your shell and just showed your real personality. I appreciate you. What's going on, Agnes? I hope you enjoyed the gift. It was supposed to have gotten there sooner, but with everything going on, Last month's loyalty winner, she received her prize, I do believe, yesterday. And I'm I not mistaken. I want to hear from Danity also because I asked her to send me the pictures that she took from the meet and greet. She ain't never did that. Hmm. Mm. Sorry, Danity. That's what mm. okay. got. Are you ready for Tiger Woods? No, I'm not. Just because that man staved off sex for, for, for some time being, his back's still not good. So don't worry about Tiger Woods. But. Let's get the show started because somehow off like it was trying to get to him. I don't, I don't probably not. But that's all right. Let's yeah, let's, let's blow through these topics real quick because it's time to go. What's going on? And speaking of, you know, I'm, you must be psychic because that, of course, is our first topic of the day. Kyle Van Oy, he's coming back home. He resigns a he resigns with the Ravens on a two year deal worth nine million dollars. Um, I do believe when the season ended, he said something about, I think my play deserves a little more pay. Then he backtracked and was like, I didn't say that, but I would have thought that he would have resigned for a little more than 4.5 average per year. Um, to me, this is a decent sign. It, it at least brings back someone that was actually productive last season and maybe takes away a, a specific need in the draft. Because for some reason, I believe that the Ravens were actually going to try and draft an edge in the first round. I, I don't think this would stop them if that's what they wanted to do. It's Kyle Van Noy. He's he's old and he's only going to be here maybe one or two years. Uh, so I don't think if, they, if that's their plan, I don't think bringing back Kyle Van Noy is going to stop that. But I agree. I do. I do think it's a solid signing. Uh, he played very well for Baltimore last year. Uh, getting him back on the cheap deal is not. I mean, it's not really surprising to me. Again, he's he's older. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he's approaching that cliff. You don't know when he's going to hit it. The teams aren't really anxious to pay guys like that. But, um, yeah, no, I think it was a solid signing. Yeah, uh, last season at age 32, was he 33? Either or. He had a career high of nine sacks. He is 33 currently right now. I don't know if his birthday has come or gone. So expecting him to replicate that in the upcoming season, being 34 and possibly 35 years old in – in the next two seasons, I don't think that it's physically possible for him. Not just because I don't think that the decline is going to be so steep. What I think is going to happen is because he doesn't have Jadavion Clowney there, he doesn't have Pat Queen there, he may not even have a Jabo in there, he may have to carry the load a lot on his own. And as well as Roquan Smith plays, Roquan Smith is really not a blitz. He just turned 33 uh, on okay. March 26th. Happy birthday, Kyle. Happy birthday, Kyle. Welcome back to Baltimore. Welcome, welcome back. And uh, Tanja, no, we did not stream last night. We were actually at the uh, stadium. <laughs> we actually, we gonna, I'm gonna show you some highlights, but we actually, we actually did the the, the patron stadium tour yesterday, and that's what we're talking about. And then Tanja really going for that plausible deniability, uh, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> 
next? Let's keep moving. What's next? <laughs> Who hating on Kyle? Nobody's hating on Kyle. We just not talking about her. Right. We just not expecting a 33 year old to come back in here and get another career high in sex. You, you know what? Yeah. No, he, he's right. I'm sorry, Robert. They got Micah Parsons uh, with this signing. How are you talking about? Man, move, go to the next one. Brad, <laughs> 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 you really, you uh, do you really want to watch wrestling that bad? Yeah, it's very good. Right player, right price. Yeah, he does. Like he's a, he's a solid player. Nobody like nobody can be mad at this signing. But I think that what a lot of people are saying is we can't stop here. We can't say you know what. This is the tip top. This is the antithesis of this. And let us not move on. Um, BP, I hope so. I hope it is the fourth round or fifth and not the first. But we never, it depends on, I think, what's his name? Lie to, lie to, or whatever yeah. from UCLA. I think mm-hmm. if he's available, the Ravens are going, the Ravens are going to marathon sprint that card in, even with all of the things that we need. Stephanie, she's still in wrestling. Hey, no. On to the next one. What are we doing? You know better than bring up Jeremy's comments. Let's go. Wow, you were just praising Jeremy last week, bro. I like Jeremy. I like Jeremy's a good. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. All right, next topic. So I was reading an article <laughs> earlier today, and I thought it was comical. Um, one of the Ravens publications was sitting there, and they were trying to bash Dalvin Cook, mm-hmm. telling him he was overconfident in his abilities and he was washed, so to speak. And it may be the case. We don't know. He, to me, wasn't given enough curries or enough, you know what I'm saying, ability to shine on his team. So that got me to, what? Indian foods. Who in the woods? You said, you said enough curries? Curries. Oh, okay. Not curries. Curries. It sounded, it, sounded, it sounded like you said curries. So I'm sorry. Sometimes if my Baltimore accent kicks in. I apologize. Oh, my bad. I, I misheard. <laughs> Curries. So that got me to thinking about should we bring Dalvin Cook back? Because he did not have the year that a lot of people thought he was going to have. He is still a four time consecutive 1100 yard back. And we're just needing him to come in and do backup duty. He's not still that. Uh, he, he I mean, didn't, he didn't get there last year. Uh, and, and the answer is they've got Derrick Henry, they've got Justice Hill, they've got Keaton. Keaton. Uh, Mitchell Dallin. coming back off of his injury. Dalvin Cook, I don't think, has a place on this roster. They need to uh, either sign another, preferably younger player to be that back end or go in the draft and, and get somebody on day three. Uh, but I don't think Dalvin really has a has much of a place there. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. What about uh, Odell Beckham Jr.? It's Odell Beckham Jr. Huh? But why are you asking me about? We're talking about running backs, right? We're just talking about free agency needs. Okay. So, oh, Kyle, no. so Kyle Van Noy, maybe he doesn't necessarily wipe the slate clean as far as needs, but it does knock it down a peg. So the Ravens can possibly focus in another area because we, if yeah. if 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 we do sign Dalvin Cook and he's somewhat decent, then that means we don't have to draft a running back in the draft. Okay, but you will also be signing him for more than uh, what a, a rookie running back would cost you. He's a guy who's not going to really play, uh, hopefully. Yeah. What is it with y'all in UDFAs? Robert, Robert, I don't know if you'd be trolling us or you did serious. But tell he me, you know what? Him. Tell me, tell me, you say we need to get another UDFA. Tell me what UDFA has shined for the Baltimore Ravens. The last one. Hold on. Well, well, no, you're gonna say Keaton. He's not gonna say Keaton because I can't. Yeah. What is it? Because what is it? I don't know if it was you or Jose that said I can't get excited about a guy who's gotten injured twice in 84 snaps. Yeah, that was me. But Eight. you know they don't care what I say. So <laughs> twice in 84 snaps, and that's something to get excited about. He flashed moments. Mm-hmm. I like Keaton, and I hope he succeeds. But he's not somebody I'm dependent upon. Right. So yeah, name name me one, because that one doesn't qualify. You need you need at least a hundred curries or at least a hundred touches. And listen, for me, Dalvin Cook is just a one year stop. Like we can't replace every need that we have. We had 25, 27, 25 to twenty seven free agents this off season, so we yeah. can't plug in all those holes at once. But in the- but but, I'll, but let's be honest. I mean, running back's pretty easy to 
pretty easy to fix. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you can go ahead. Ezekiel, uh, here's the, here's the uh, running backs who are currently available. Okay. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Boston Scott. Damian Harris is retired. They need to take him off the list. Cam Akers, uh, Dari Ogunwale, J.K. Dobbins, Matt Breida, Kareem Hunt, Rashad Penny, uh, Jared McKinnon, Latavius Murray, Marlon Mack, Josh Kelly, Lynn Bowden, Eno Benjamin. Uh, so, I mean, if I'm Baltimore and I'm looking to bring in a – uh, you know, a veteran running back. Mm -hmm. I would out of that list, I'm taking Jarek McKinnon all day, all day, all day. Absolutely. Not, not that one good. Okay, I mean, I was just throwing names out there. Um, yeah. outside of OBJ, they Tyler Boyd's still out there. That's surprising to me. And I know that mm -hmm. he's not the receiver that he used to be, but he could be a solid two, solid three that can come in and give some depth. And we're gonna go over some receiving rooms in a little bit because I was maybe maybe nowhere to be found, but. There are some guys out there in offensive line, Connor Williams. I know he was injured last season. He could still come in. I've been banging on the table for Dalton Rosner for the mm -hmm. longest time, but apparently the Ravens are possibly going to go into the draft and try to plug the holes in because they believe in what they actually have. Listen, Jared McKinnon looks like he's 34, but I don't care how old he looks or appears. Name me a team that can stop him from catching touchdowns out the backfield with Patrick Holmes, Patrick Mahomes, because I can't. Because when he's in the game, they win. And a lot of the slump that Kansas City was in this all the season, past season, was because he was hurt for a stretch of games, and they couldn't utilize. Him. I don't understand why they were signing your boy though. He's turning he's turning thirty two this year. Okay, that might also be another reason he's looking thirty four ish. But I can't. Clyde Edwards Alaire. I can't believe they resigned him. Over J.K. Dobbins because he gave them virtually nothing. But well, I mean, <laughs> J.K. Dobbins, right? So uh, yeah. Anyway, look, moving on to what else we, we've got here. What you don't have any free agents that you possibly might think that the team can bring uh, in? What a wide receiver? Just in general across the team. Oh, free agency started a long time ago, bro. <laughs> like I know that y'all didn't show up to it. But it started a long time ago. Most of most of the people who came to the free agency party right. had found a match and went home. Okay. All right, Brian. I see that you know. Yes. Yes. Andrew Pete and Makai Beckham are still out there. I would think that if Makai Beckham could actually get in shape and really wanted to play football, I'd give him that. I don't listen, know if he would have. No, you listen, don't want DJ Chark. Listen, don't even, I don't, don't, I don't know if you're the person I was. Name. I don't even know if you. I don't know if you were the person I was talking about last week because I found somebody on Twitter that was telling somebody we needed DJ Chark or uh, Labishka, mm -hmm. and they would come in and do ma magnificent things. They won't. Wow. DJ Chark can't stay healthy first and foremost. Second of all, his hands are suspect. I thought he was going to be decent. I, thought, I wanted the Ravens to sign him before he signed with Carolina, but just that stint there told me all I needed to know, and I'm just like, Chark's not that guy. Well, no, Chark is just a guy, right? Like, and I mean, we, he's, not we have a, a lot of he's not a he's not a terrible player or by by any stretch of the imagination, but he he isn't anything special. Uh, and like I said, he can't really stay healthy. He's not a difference making type of player. True, 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 true. All right. So, do you want to get into the next topic? Yep. Or do we go into? <laughs> I, I do. What's going on? I, exactly. I would rather have Boyd Boyd than Chark. All right. So. If you heard us speaking about it yesterday, everywhere, right. forever. Wait a minute, D didn't he play with Matt Stafford? Uh, was he with Matt Stafford in Detroit? Was, well, I'm trying to remember if uh, if Goff was there already, but yes, he was in Detroit. Yeah. Well, I mean, Goff is looking pretty good. He in mm -hmm. Amon Ross St. Brown, and the rest of those guys are looking pretty decent. Uh, he's going to get Josh Reynolds a second contract. Listen, at some point you gotta you gotta play, right? You gotta play. Like it don't it don't really matter. I mean right. he, he he wasn't even that great in college. Like and, and my man went to LSU. Facts. You know what? Did he get hurt last year? Because I haven't heard anything from Russell Gage in a couple seasons. I, I think that he did. Um I'm not hundred percent sure, but I believe he did. Okay. All right, listen, so before we move on to the next topic, we're going to talk about what happened yesterday afternoon. 
Um, some of us were there. Some of us. This was not, not on the top but list. And yes, Russell Gage missed it all was, last season. Yeah, you got hurt. So yesterday, for the patrons, for the people that, and some people that actually support the channel and just are always behind us, what we did was myself, Lunch Break Hot Take, uh, Open Mic, OTR Mic, Coach Evans' channel, um, Electric Relaxation, we got together and we took out our patrons and we took them on a tour of Ravens Stadium. And I'm going to put out a video tomorrow about all the things that happened, but this is just a little snippet of some of the things that happened yesterday. Hey, Brian, this might be new to you. This is where they head out to the field. So let's go out and take a look. <laughs> we must protect this house. Are you enjoying yourself, Yolanda? I am. Yes, I think we come out. All right, that wasn't a video I uploaded, but it'll do. So shout out to everybody that showed up. Shout out to the people that made it there but didn't make it in for whatever reason. Appreciate y'all. And also, shout out to Zell's. We went and had pizza there afterwards. Afterwards, it was delicious. We just kind of showed up 20 deep, and the service was outstanding. So I want to give a shout out to Jim, the owner. He came and talked to us. We had a great time. Great banter, some uh, other things. Shout out to Phaedra or Denise. I'm sorry, Denise, because she was a she was a little skeptical. She was one of the newer patrons. And then she went on a tour and met everybody. And it was real comfortable and everything was good, I assume. And she even upped her patrons afterwards. So I want to say thank you. Shout out to you. Appreciate you. We will be going back. I do believe the second week of August. And this is going to be special invitation only. Special, special invitation. invitation only. Yes. Wow. Special. Yes. Special invitation only. But moving on. Also, speaking of people that support the show, let me say I appreciate Don C. He is last month's loyalty points winner. Shout nice. out to Congratulations, Don. Don. So make sure you hit me up, Don, on Twitter. Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are, so you can tell me what you want as a prize. And if you are new to the channel, what we do here, what we do at Lunch Break Hot Take, what we do at Sip to Tally, we give and reward our patrons and, and just people that come and support us with loyalty points. And you can get loyalty points by just sitting in the stream and watching. You can get it by commenting. You can get it by donating. There's a pinned link in the comment section where you can donate to the channel because we do not do Super Chats over here because I like all my coins don't like sharing coins and I don't want YouTube to get 30% of something they did not make because I put the show together. We came up with the topics. We're sitting here doing work. So YouTube, you don't deserve it. So all of these things will get your loyalty points. And at the end of every month, we give away a prize up to a certain prize point. You just let us know what you want. And then once a year, we give away a super prize, which is going to be prizes that are better than the rest. They may be Ravens tickets to a game. I'm not for certain. It all depends upon the people here, the participation. But these are the ways that we like to say thank you for everyone actually supporting us throughout these years. Yes, Zella. Zella's Pizza. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, it's close to the stadium. Amazing food, amazing service. You know, they'll tell you. Danny, Yolanda, they were there. They'll tell you. It was a good service. And like I said, it was two guys and it was 20 of us and the food came extremely fast and it was, and it was actually pretty good. So yes. Yeah. Um, Bazel, we're not splitting the skybox. Look, I, I ate regular pizza with vegan cheese, bro. Like, what do you think? I had? <laughs> so listen, we went up to, um, quick story. I'm sorry, Brian, quick story. So while we were in a tour, we got a tour of the skybox. I've never been in the skybox before. So mm -hmm. this, he took us to the skybox in the 500s and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, on anybody's parade, but to me, I'm like, yo, this is all right. I'm not paying $3,000 for this. The view is okay. Like the room was cool. The view was not all right. So the, 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 the concept that was brought up was maybe we need to split, find a good 10, 15 people come together and split the cost of a skybox. Mm -hmm. but I'm like, my view is better on my TV. 
your view is always better on your TV, no matter where you are in the stadium. This is factually correct. It's factually correct. So unless we're going down a lower level, I ain't I ain't trying to do it, bro. Yeah. Like I'm good with it. All right. Moving on to the next time. Man, time flop. 25 minutes, Bradley. I know. Time. We're like 10 over. He's interjecting a little, little side stories and <sighs> here we are. All right. Next time. Started off with a championship match, right? Who? Wait. They started off with a championship match? They sure did. Man, I'm so sorry. I'm are so you? sorry. Like I, no, I, no, I, 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 I truly apologize, Brownie. Um, but I have heard of this thing. It's called Don't modern, it. modern, Don't modern technology. Modern technology. Right. Just keep moving. On to the All right. Because <laughs> you, because you know what my, modern technology is doing right. I'm watching it right now. Okay. I know you are. So you'll be very that. disengaged for the rest of the show. <laughs> it's the show's not going on much longer. We got two more topics. Two more topics. Okay? okay. And someone and someone brought this okay, up one, in the chat. One, early. two. Yeah, let's go. Let's someone go. Let's start with one. Someone let's brought this up one. in the chat earlier and they wanted to talk about it. The Houston Texans mm-hmm. trade for Stephon Diggs. They traded Stephon Diggs for a second round draft pick. And they also re- in 2025, might I add, and they received the sixth and the fifth round pick in return. So they got Stephon mm-hmm. Diggs and two more draft picks to go along with this signing. And for mm-hmm. me, I thought that this signing may have tipped the scales for the Houston Texans because they were up and comers in the league last season with, with the rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, and all the pieces that they kind of put together on the offensive line. We took one of their pieces that they didn't need anymore, that they kicked to the curb after the first game, and we brought him in, and now we think he's going to come in and start for us. But I digress on that point. Um, so what happened is a lot of the Ravens flock was like, eh, we don't need Stephon Diggs. He's older. He's declining. I don't understand how averaging 111 catches, 1,343 yards and 9.5 touchdowns per season is declining, but maybe that's the case. Then they came back with, hey, he's too expensive. His cap hit is too expensive. Well, guess what the Houston Texans did? They voided the last three years of his deal, and now it's essentially a one-year deal, and he becomes a free agent in 2025. So I just need to know what are Ravens fans' excuses now that we could not have picked up, picked up Stephon Diggs? Go. We don't want to. That's what? all the excuses. Listen, I, I, I'll tell you the excuse for Ravens. It's not even excuses uh, that they that they believe. It's right. born out of insecurity. Ravens fans do not, and I've heard Ravens fans say this directly. They don't want expectations. They Thanks. don't want to be the that number one team that people are, are, are gunning for. They want to fly under the radar. They want to surprise teams. They want to be the underdog. And, you know, it is what it is. So that's why, hey, you know, they didn't want Derrick Henry either last season it's when he could have made a difference, right? But, and then when they, when they got him in the offseason, best move ever. But they said that they tried, though. Mm-hmm. I promise you, sure we, picked up, we picked up the phone. It was like, y'all, tra- hey, y'all trading Henry? Nope. All right, bye. Yeah. In the conversation, we tried, fellas. It's no pleasing them. So I get it. But once again, um, getting so getting into this and the reason it upset me now, Stefan Diggs may be on the decline. I'm not really, I wouldn't expect Stefan to come in here and get 100 catches. I wouldn't expect him to come in and get 13 touchdowns. I mean, nine touchdowns in 1,300 yards. But I would expect him to come in here and be the best wide receiver that the Ravens have. Mm -hmm. I know everybody's high on Zay Flowers. I know that they think he's going to be amazing, and I think he's going to be amazing as well. But right now, Stephon Diggs and Zay Flowers are on two levels, two different levels. Mm -hmm. Two different levels. And a a lot of people are going to say, eh, well, you know, he's a cancer in the locker room. He pouts, he whines. What players don't? What players don't pout and whine? just because they want the ball and they want to win. He knows that he's a difference maker. I want my wide receivers, especially in the playoffs, to want the ball. I want them to call for the ball, not when they're triple teamed. I don't want that. I don't want them in the end zone like this, like they're wide open. I want my wide receivers to want the ball. And as you can see, Josh Allen has led the league in turnovers since he's come into the league. He would have more turn. He would have more interceptions if he were throwing to somebody outside of Stephon Diggs. Because Stephon batted away a lot of balls. Pause. Um, so all of this about uh, he wouldn't fit right here. If the Ravens organization and if the Ravens locker room is as strong as we claim it to be, why would we not 
be able to kind of keep that under wraps because a lot of people said in the past, Steve Smith was a problem. Steve Smith was a cancer. They had to get him away from Cam Newton because they didn't want him ruining Cam Newton. But we he came to Baltimore and he wasn't a problem. So I'm not understanding how we tend to overlook talent for character flaws, so to speak. But we'll bring in the nice guy that can't play. And then we'll sit here and scream about, why can't this guy play? Why aren't we getting over the hump? Because we're looking too much into character and not looking into guys that actually can play football. Yeah, pretty much. And, and listen, they're not afraid to bring in uh, character risks on the defensive side of the ball. They brought in Earl Thomas. They brought in Jimmy Smith. They brought in Terrell Suggs. True. So, yeah. It, it's just an excuse. Okay. Okay, Prod. Listen, I bet you some money. June 1st cuts. Let a specific defender become available. I bet they'll find the money. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you they'll find the money to sign them. And I know you're being sarcastic, but I'm just saying. I know they're going to find a way to sign them because when it comes to defense, this is what we do. I know you're trolling, bro. It's like, we here, buddy. You know what I'm saying? And yes, the Ravens are living, still living in the 2000s. And this is the thing that Rodney and Jose and I, we talk about. Like, Ravens fans want to still have that antiquated thinking of we're going to go in and shut teams down. And I think Jose said it. Until you start holding teams to zero points, I don't want to hit nothing because we're not scoring points offensively in the playoffs. So no matter what this defense does, we're not scoring and we're not winning. And yes, we're a spoiled fan base. We're a spoiled people. The team wins regular season games. The team doesn't win playoff games. And the playoffs is more important to me personally than any regular season game. Yes, I love to beat the 49ers. I love to beat the Dolphins. I love having that smack talk with other fan bases. But when it comes to the playoffs, we can't clap back at nobody because we're not winning. Defense is holding it down. Defense has been holding it down since 2018. Offense has not held up its end of the bargain. But yet and still, here we talk about. Man, we need to get that pass rusher. I saw somebody's mock draft today. Some sports reporter's mock draft today. He drafted three cornerbacks, two edge rushers, and a defensive lineman out of nine picks. And I looked and was like, well, how are we going to score? Because I guess yeah. I guess essentially what we're supposed to do is, I guess we're supposed to let the young boys cook again. Because we tried that a couple seasons ago, and it did not work out. What do you mean? Devin DuVernay got to, you know, spread his wings as a number one receiver. Spread my wings. My wings. So, <laughs> it went what? I mean, and, and, and you know, he let you know that, that you didn't need to resign him. Right. <laughs> so, so in, in looking at everything going on with Houston Texans, they decided that they were going to rank wide receiver rooms. And can you guess where the Ravens came in at? 28. I'm going to tell you my, I'm going to tell you the truth, brother. Mm -hmm. I don't know cuz they didn't go that high. <laughs> they decided we don't need to go that high. But what they did do was they they put out a list of the top 12 wide receiver rooms. And to me, these are the things and I want y'all to look at this, look at this list and see how certain quarterbacks are surrounded with talent. You have a team on here that's surrounded with wide receiver talent, but they don't have a quarterback. And I need you to make it make sense why we have a two-time MVP and he's trotting out here and we're happy about, man, you know, we almost got Michael Gallup. We almost signed Josh Reynolds. Listen, we're bringing in uh, Deontay Hardy. He, he could return punts, but he could be a wide receiver for and this is, and we're happy about this because of the price point. We're like, yo, they don't cost that much. So, Lamar can make do. He can make do with what we got. But this is, we're going to run through this list real quick. So coming in at number 12, we got the Tennessee Titans. DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley. I don't care what you think about him. DeAndre Hopkins should have been a Raven. Still very productive. Traylon Burks, I don't understand how you can be 19 years old and have no conditioning. Befuddles the hell out of me. I don't know. Coming in at number 11, Dallas Cowboys. CeeDee Lambs, Brandon Cooks, somebody that they traded for that the Ravens could have easily traded for and Jalen Tolbert don't know him, but his numbers eclipse Devin DuVernay's Tylen Wallace. And he, he doesn't even play. 
Coming in at number 10, we got the Los Angeles Rams. Oh, gosh. Cooper Cup. Ravens should have drafted him. Let him slip by. Puka Nakua. John Harbaugh said he was on his lips during the draft, but he just didn't speak up about it. And Tutu Atwell. Other misses. Don't know what's going on with their quarterback situation, but they have talent at the wide receiver position. Then coming in at number nine, we have the Minnesota Vikings. And I, for the life of me, can't remember who they signed at quarterback. Was it Marcus Mariota? No, it was uh, Sam Darnold. Sam, Sam Darnold is a quarterback. He has Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison to throw to. So pretty much Sam Darnold is going to have a career year this year while Lamar struggles and everybody's happy with Nelson Aguilar. Solid guy. And I know Brian's going to look at me like, oh, but you know, he does his thing. Solid dude. Solid dude. But he's going to be a starter for us, and he's not starting for other teams. Then coming in at number eight, the Seattle Seahawks, DK Metcalf. Could have had him instead of, you know, somebody, but I like I like Hollywood. Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Unfortunately, Seattle does not have a quarterback. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah, they did. They just mm-hmm. traded for – um. Geno Smith is their quarterback. No, no, no. They just traded for – um. Yeah, they they brought in Sam Howell to back up Geno Smith. You're right. They have no quarterbacks. So moving on to number seven, we got the Tampa Bay Bucks with former number one overall pick. Your boy, Your boy Mike Evans resigned. Chris Godwin, Trey Palmer, coming in at number six, the Chicago Bears. I'm sorry, yeah, it's about Chicago, to get a lot better. The Chicago Panthers with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Tyler Scott. And thanks to them, thanks to the Carolina Panthers, Chicago is about to be set up for life. They're about to get a Marvin Harrison or a Roma Dunze or, you know. Bruh, they about to be set for life thanks to Carolina. Then coming in at number five, we got the Philadelphia Eagles with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and the newly signed Devontae Parker. He, we should, as Ravens fans, should know Devontae Parker because the last time we saw that guy, he got a new contract off of us. Coming in at number four, the San Francisco 49ers, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuels, Jawan Jennings. Who's the other guy? They got another guy there. I can't remember his name. Mm, you mean George Kittle or Christian McCaffrey? No, it's a wide receiver. He doesn't play that. He doesn't. He, he doesn't get the pub that the rest of them do. But he shows up. But once again, this I is three. Think you're talking about Jawan Jennings. Yeah, it might be. Then coming in at number three, we got Jamal Chase, T. Higgins, and Trenton Irwin. Irwin was decent. Like he didn't play a lot, but still, with a backup quarterback, 316 yards, he would be at the top of the wide, wide receiver list of the Ravens. And most of y'all don't know who Trenton Irwin is. I'm just saying. Coming in number two, of course, we got the Miami Dolphins, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Could have had Tyreek Hill, but of course, you know, money is an obstacle when it comes to talent and bringing it in to Baltimore for some reason in Brexton Burials. He's still in the league? Jesus. Coming in at number one, sure the, the Houston I, Texans. I don't, I don't know how this is number one, but all right. You don't know how it's number one? I, I don't. I think, so what I think made this number one was the fact of that Nico Collins kind of emerged the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. And if Tank Dell hadn't gotten hurt, he'd have then been a 1,400. Collins, then Neil Collins wouldn't have emerged. But we don't, we don't <laughs> know that. We don't right. know that. They might have been two 1,200 yards even. So, so to me, who do you think should be number one? Uh, I mean, the team who came in at number two or three or four, any of that. I, I just don't think that that that, uh, that group is – I it's a good group for sure. I just don't think right. it's the best in the league. You know, and and – who else wasn't on that list? Uh, and, and probably, probably will be uh, by the by the start of the season. Is Kansas City? You know they've got Rishi Rice, who's handling his issues. Uh, they just signed Hollywood Brown, and I think most people expect them to be drafting a receiver at thirty-two. True. Uh, which receiver will they get though? But then also, if Pretty the report, if, if the reports are true, not true, true, not true, true. Also, Miami's going to add Odell Beckham Jr. to that list. I'll say we're going to drop them down a little bit. I don't know why you're you laughing. I just. You just, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, so uh, it's another year removed for Odell Beckham Jr. from his injury. He took most of last year off. He should be well and refreshed. He didn't play in the playoffs. So, I mean, you know, he, he may be good to go. But I, I do believe, even with this list, I do believe the Texans are now in the top five. Mm-hmm. They may not be number one. They're in the top five. And for me, the Ravens are nowhere close to having two receivers come this close. We have Zay Flowers and. Now, in the past, they could have made the argument, if we were adding everyone, they could have said, hey, Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews isn't Mark Andrews anymore. So now we have Zay Flowers. We're going into the season. 
after John Harbaugh came before everyone and was like, man, we got to get this operation right. We're going to do right by Lamar and get him everything that he needs. You're going into a season right now in this moment with Zay Flowers. And the rest and of the Jacks to five. And you can't realistically draft a receiver in round one because you have three holes on the O-line. All right. So now we have to get a round two wide receiver. But we know the Ravens aren't going to go offense, offense in the draft. They got to go offense, defense. Because <laughs> they don't feel right. It don't it, it don't sit right in their soul. They start twitching and get itchy. So we may have to go with a third round, third round wide receiver. And then where is that going to leave us? Because we can't draft wide receivers. We hit on Zay, kudos, but we can't draft wide receivers. So how is this going to look? What are we going to look like going into the season? And I think, you know, we're starting to get a little tired of saying the same thing. Like, bro, I understand it's not Madden. You're not going to go out there and sign everybody and you don't have the money for this. But make an effort. Make an effort to put some talent around Lamar Jackson. Somebody should tell John Lynch it's not Madden. (laughs) To tell who? John Lynch. Because he got Debo and Ayuk and Kittle and Christian McCaffrey, and they still have a pretty good third receiver in, uh, in Jamal Jennings. That's facts. And they still have a bunch of talent on defense. And they just went and signed Leonard Floyd. They brought in Leonard Floyd. And Gross Matos. Don't leave him out. And, and Gross Matos. Listen, Speak- I, 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 I kind of joke, but they gave him like eight or nine million a year. They did. So, they, did. Yeah. they did. And then speaking of – didn't the, didn't the uh, Panthers just make a nice signing? I don't know. Why are you laughing like that? I'm not laughing. I'm happy. Okay. I mean, they, they did sign uh, Jadavion Clowney. I thought that was pretty nice. Right. It's not a two-hour stream, Yolanda. d said, this might be the best receiver draft ever. I'm not going to try to hear we can't draft wide receiver. Now, I've also heard that this was a deep old offensive line class. I heard this is a deep cornerback class. Now, this may be the best wide receiver draft class ever, but those best wide receivers the Ravens aren't going to get. They're just not going to get them. They may get somebody decent and serviceable, but they're not going to get one of the best wide receivers because of the non-draft picks the Ravens have. They're not trading any of those picks. They're not packaging picks to move up to get a better player. I don't, I don't, I, as much as as much as I love the wide receiver position, I don't think that the Ravens need to get one of those wide receivers early, I think they have to show up the offensive line because we put ourselves in this hole. Now, if they'd have done some other things in free agency earlier, then that opens it up for the draft to say, you know what, we can go wherever we need to go. Because my thing now is, which Ravens which Ravens front office do we believe? Do we believe the best player available or draft for need? Because they say they don't draft for need. They say they draft best player available. And you've said it before, Brody, that couldn't have been true with Patrick Queen. No, That couldn't have been true uh, with Odafe Owe. How 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 did they manage to find uh, in the fourth round the best player available was a tight end twice and a punter? And how a- that happen? They don't draft best player available. No team in the league drafts best player available. Not really. Right. Uh, but, you know, it's just a thing that they like to say. It's something they tell the fan base so everybody can be like, no, bro, you don't vote for need. You go for best player available. None of those, none of the players that we drafted in a lot of these drafts were ever the best player available. They went with who they liked. And I think I told the story in another video where John Harbaugh sat down with Kamala Correa and was like, I like the cut of your jib. You're a good dude. And he was like, we're going to draft that guy because he's my kind of people. It had nothing to do with skill. And we saw dude came in, did nothing for the team, went to the Texans, did nothing for the Texans, had two cups of coffee and was out of the league. Because we don't draft players that can play. We draft guys that are good character. Somebody that John could bring home to his to, to his daughter and be like, hey, you can marry this guy. And it's never about, is you, are you a dog? Do you love football? And I listen, Ray Lewis, you can say what you want about Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis loved football. And I think, I think that aspect of his character made him a cut above most players because he loved football. He ate football. He slept football. He studied football. We got guys now that come in and they like the celebrity. Of course, they like the money. Why shouldn't they? but they don't love the aspect of football. They don't love training. They don't love studying on their off time. It's kind of like your job asking you to work off the clock. Mm -hmm. They're not doing that. And we don't get these guys in. So, Jay, I don't know why you ask these silly questions. What's up, Jay? We know know he's using all his picks because a couple years back, I would have swore 
on everything that was holy, John Harbaugh was not going to use 11 draft picks in a draft. I swore he wasn't. I swore EDC wasn't going to go in there and say, you know what? We're going to pick every player. I bet on that. And guess what he did? Picked every god darn player he could. I don't know. I don't know. Shout out because they were. Dave Vaughn. Like, so I, I thought you were coming to get pizza with us. Yeah, I thought you were coming to get pizza with us. I still got the I still got your prize. If I knew that, I would have given you your prize in the parking lot. What's up, bro? <laughs> All right, somehow this is morphed into 45 minutes. So let's get on to our oh, final. Man. Let's get on to our final topic of the day. Can we do that, B? Yeah. You know, am I allowed like, to do I, that? I would appreciate it if you would. All right. Thank Many you of you, unless you've been living under a rock and have not seen in the last hour or so, we did it. South Carolina. I'm sorry. Like like Jasmine used to say when she was a baby, we, Jasmine and I used to live in South Carolina, and she used to always say South Carolina. So South Carolina defeats Iowa 87-75 to win the national championships. The lady, I can't say lady Gamecocks because they are the premier team. So I guess we need to start calling them the guy Gamecocks for the men's side. But the Gamecocks completed a perfect season going 38-0, and the first team to have an undefeated season since the 2016 season. I'm not going to name the team that actually did it because I can't stand that coach, the head coach. Hmm? It's Ephraim. It's puke. So. Yeah, Ephraim. It's, you know, it's puke on. Yeah. So, you know, shout out. Shout out to them and what they did. Um, taking on Caitlin Clark. Shout out to Caitlin Clark. Like, no shade, no hate. She has helped transform women's college basketball into something, into heights that they have never been in before. Um, she transcended the sport. Apparently, she does not like to play defense, and she continues to turn the ball over. That's why she can't win a championship. But kudos to her. Hopefully, mad success in the NBA. Rodney, what did you think about this? And what do you think about college basketball as a whole right now? Uh, I thought it was a very entertaining game. You know, Kaylin Clark uh, broke a record in the first quarter, scoring 18 points, uh, the most ever scored in, in a quarter in a championship game. And then uh, Raven Johnson pretty much shut her down for the for the rest of the game. Uh, she finished with right. 30 on 28 shots. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I thought it was – it, it kind of went the way that uh, we expected. They came out – Iowa came out hot and then just kind of – got slowly ground down over the rest of the game by South Carolina. It was just a much better, much deeper team. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, women's college basketball, it is the premier uh, side of the college basketball. Could not care less who wins that men's championship. Couldn't tell you any of the names of the players outside of Zach Eady, and the only reason I know his name <laughs> is because he's a two-time player of the year who is projected to go 30th overall in the NBA draft. Um but yeah, I, and I think that there's a lot of stars uh, coming up behind Clark and, and Reese and Cardoso. Uh, so I think that, that women's college basketball is in a great place. Uh, and I think the WNBA is going to pick up a lot of viewers uh, this coming season who want to continue to follow Clark and Reese. So I, I, I thought it was a fantastic season overall for women's basketball. Thanks, thanks. I have never in my life watched more women's college basketball games. The men's side, I didn't watch any of it outside of watching Duke play. Except I for the last game. Duke. I watched Duke. Except for the last game that they played. And for me, just that transition, just the exposure that they're getting, I love it. Like I said, my brother says that I'm a feminist. It is what it is. I take those shots. I'm just so proud of what these young ladies have done, like Juju Watkins, Hannah Hidalgo, just all of these people. Even even uh, uh, not so much Hidalgo. I mean, I don't like the school, but the little the young lady was balling. I don't like Notre Dame, but the young lady was balling. And also this young lady right here who, as a freshman, Tessa Johnson, led the team in scoring. Because as 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 Raven Johnson quoted, revenge season, she did go one for 11 and only scored three points. But her yeah, defense. But that, but that one came off a steal on Caitlin Clark right at the end of the half. So Thanks. that was pretty she, good. She had, yeah, she had four steals, didn't she? Uh, I don't know the exact number, but yeah. I think she I think yeah. she had four steals. But yes, the revenge tour for South Carolina is complete. Shout out to Coach Don Staley. This is her third national championship. This is South Carolina's second cha national championship in this in the last three seasons. Um, 
They still all the teams return. I think Raven Johnson is the only one. Not all. And, 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 and Cardoso and Cardoso's Cardoso. going. Raven Johnson's going. Uh, Pow Pow is also a senior. Was she? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, she came from uh, Oregon, right? I'm not sure where she came from. Yeah, she came. She came from Oregon. Okay, well, don't ask questions you know the answer to. But uh, Wiley, <laughs> Wiley, and Tessa Johnson <laughs> are both freshmen. They're coming back uh, along with most of the rest of the roster. Ashley, so they're Ashley, gonna be Ashley Schwatkins. They're gonna be right back in the uh, in they the, the, in the picture. Yeah, yeah. South Carolina is gonna be tough to beat, uh, with, especially with the landscape changing and more of these young ladies opting out to go professional. Because back in the day, they pretty much had to do their four years and move on, but now they can leave early. So if those freshmen stay together and develop, because I like for Wally, like it was times during the season where she she was, they say she can dunk. Mm -hmm. They say she can dunk. So, you know, she got up there that one time and affected the shot. So I'm just, shout out to them. I'm just glad for them. I'm, I'm glad for Coach Staley. You know what I'm saying? Me and my brother used to fight over her back in the day when she was in college. Yeah. Like, no, that's my girlfriend. That's my girlfriend. Both lost. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's, yeah. that, that's that's pretty much the show, though, right? You're a terrible person. I'm not um, How am I a show? terrible person? So we got nine minutes to kill. So no, we don't. <laughs> no, that pretty much is the show. Unless you have anything to talk about, I I do not. You know, you don't want to talk about the future. I would go. <laughs> Things we got, things we got, you know. Just no, you don't. No, listen. Not, yeah. not, not specifics. Not specific. Not specifics. I'm just saying. Future. Not that. Not that, not that part. I'm talking about the other stuff. Well, well I don't know what other stuff you're talking about. Okay, you said Caitlin Clark gonna win a chip. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Listen, and I'm and I'm not picking on you, but I'm sure that when South Carolina, when uh I went up by 11 points, they were saying the same thing. I about to win this. I about to get this chip. Caitlin about to be a champion. South Carolina was like, not so fast, I, my I, friend. You know, and a lot of people have made this point uh, for for the new the people who are kind of just starting to watch uh, women's basketball, college basketball, and everything. Y'all are gonna be shocked how good the players in the WNBA are. Because <laughs> you know, I mean, the the, the okay. fever they got Aaliyah Boston, and mm -hmm. they got the number one pick again, also. So so. <laughs> I mean, I don't think. Not to say that Clark isn't a great player; she's not going to make any difference. But it's 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 going to be a while, I think. She is. Clark is going to help us go from a five win team to an eight win team. <laughs> Number one pick. Here we come again. <laughs> I'm listen. A shout, listen, shout out to Kate Clark. Like I have so much respect for that young lady, especially from last year to now. Just watching her game and not listening to the narrative that they spun on her. I have mad respect for her game. Like she is one of the goats. She's not the greatest college basketball player of all time. She's one of the goats in women's college basketball. Cheryl Miller will forever, forever be the greatest women's college basketball player in history. Hmm. She's better than Reggie Miller. And I don't think Reggie Miller is a Hall of Famer. Okay, that was an unnecessary shot. Uh, but I mean, I, I feel like you know, Brianna Stewart did win four straight national championships, right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> no. I but, mean, it's, it's, know, so, it's, our, it's, it's so many. Yeah, Shamiqua Holesclaw. I mean, yeah. that was a girl, too. Maya Moore, um, <laughs> Candace Parker, Miss Parker. Like, it's, it's a lot of them. It's a lot. But just because even um, Darren Wilder's wife, Kelsey Plum. Like, I'm not saying she's one of the ghosts, but it's just been a lot of great women's college basketball play throughout the last 10, 12 years. Yeah. And Caitlin falls amongst them. Just unfortunate. She wasn't able to win a title to go along with her accredited resume bringing into the WNBA. And we all look forward. Listen, her and Angel, they're going to the WNBA, and we're going to see what happens. But yeah. yeah, it is unfortunate that she chose Iowa instead of a school that could win a title. So is it better, per se, to go to a powerhouse school where you know you can win a title or go to a lesser-known school and build them up to a championship level, even though you may not make it over the mountaintop? Uh, for the individual, I'm going to go ahead and say go get your title. Because <laughs> <laughs> now, now, listen, you know, a ton of respect to Caitlin for, for what she did at Iowa. 
<clears throat> but now you've left Iowa and Iowa ringless. And don't really yes. care because Cameron Clark ain't there no more. You know what I thought was funny though? They did during the post-game interview, uh Caitlin Clark was like, Yeah, you know, we lost a couple key pieces from last year's team. And I'm sitting here thinking, South Carolina lost their whole starting five. Right. Let's not let's not let's not LeBron the situation to make excuses for everything. Just wow. accept your accept your accept your L wow. and keep it moving. What you heard? Listen, and that was okay. I thought we won't leave, but I need to ask you. No, I need you to. I need to ask you about this. I really wanted to get your opinion on this. I'm not a LeBron hater. Yes, you are. But I'm not a LeBron hater. Yes, you are. I respect that. You, you don't have to. You don't. You don't have to. You don't have to start this off by lying. I have respect the message of it. But let me ask you this question: what, How do you feel about his comments that he made about the 2011 Miami Heat, where he was like they didn't have enough role players? Do you feel like he was being fully truthful in that situation? Because he was which, the one that that averaged seventeen points per game. Yeah. Okay, that was the Dallas. Uh, he the was the, he, Dallas. Yeah. he was the one that averaged uh, seventeen points and three tur- four turnovers a game in that series. You you got them stats right off the top of your head for somebody who don't hate LeBron. Uh, no, they they he he choked in that series. And that, that's <laughs> all they should have they should have won. I mean, Dirk was amazing. Dirk was yeah. incredible all through that playoff run. But if LeBron plays like average LeBron, they win that series easily. Uh easily. but he he was it was uh, it was a little too big for him at the at the moment. Uh you know they because he was even through the first three quarters, he was he was fine. But when right. he got into the fourth quarters of those games, he choked. He did. And you know, and then he and he came back and he overcame it and they won a couple the next couple titles. So I mean it's whatever. That but he absolutely shot, choked in that in that series. That, that man shot eleven percent in the fourth quarter. Yeah. It's not great, but my, I'm saying, but my, own, but my question, my question isn't the bad shit. My question is, is he being fully honest to himself? Because he, he, listen, he just says stuff out of his mouth. We all with, say stuff out of our mouths. I know that's with, where he didn't let me. You didn't let me finish. Man. You didn't. You didn't let me finish though. Okay. Unprovoked, like I, don't sit there and say we didn't have enough role players. You had role players, Joe Anthony. Uh, okay, that's not uh, you see now you're proving his point for him when you when you start off but it, by but saying it, oh, Anthony. Like it, let, let's let's be real. Giannis Aslam. Like I'm not saying you had the greatest the best Lord. players, but I need I need my goat of all time to score more than 17 a game. Oh, but, but y'all keep telling me he's not. So I said y'all. I didn't say I didn't say my goat. I said y'all goat. No, you said my. Right. Yep, yeah, y'all said. Goat. I said y'all goat. You said you said my. Look, there were. I'm, I'm looking at it now. There were three players on that team who averaged ten points a game. Okay. The rest, the rest of that roster is not good, but what they was, still show up on. They should, exactly. That's all I'm saying. Like my thing is, I just need that man to just admit, like, yo, I didn't play to my best. But he's blaming others for his mistakes. That's all I'm saying, B. Okay. Then he came back. He came back the next year and dominated in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I got nothing against LeBron. Like he played it for my heat. Sounds like you have a lot against him. If I'm being honest. Whatever. All right. 57 minutes. Appreciate everybody for hanging out with us this time. Listen, we still got 76 people in here. 76 people. We have come a long, long way since the launch of this channel. If you are new, make sure to like and subscribe. I am 41 subscribers away from 4,000. 41. So if you felt inclined, if you just feel like this is a decent enough show, I know Brodney's. I know Brodney's awesome, and I'm just okay. But if you feel inclined, please subscribe to the show. Help get the numbers up. Make sure you go over to the rest of the crew. Sign up for them, too. And speaking of, Brodney, can you let the people know what you got going on and where they can find you and all that awesome, awesome content and your six days a week streaming? I didn't even realize, because I'm looking at it now, that in uh, game four, he scored eight points. Yuck. And he played 45 minutes. Fisher Uh, King? I mean, if by that you're asking if he's the greatest basketball player of all time, yes, 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 uh, yes, you can find me over on Lunch Break Hot Take. Uh, we do the LBHT show every Wednesday evening at 7 15 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, then you can also find me over on Sip to Tally Films every Monday for the Ravens Roundup with Hendo, with Jose, with OTR Mike, with Chris Just Joking, and of course with Coach Evans. Uh, you can find me over on Sugar Night 323 on Tuesdays at 9.45 p.m. Eastern Time for the Steel Conspiracy along with Hendo. Uh, we talk some Steelers and Ravens. And then sometimes you can find me on Ring Kings. 
uh, talking boxing. You know, when there's a big time event, we typically go live afterwards. That's usually, you know, one in the morning or so. But it's a lot of fun. You should uh, head over there and hit that subscribe button and join us. Indeed, indeed. Listen, we are building a community. And as you can see, it's growing. As you can see, we give back to the people that give to us. And it's not always about people donating money. It's about you spending your time, you spending your words, just people messaging, saying nice things. Like that, I think that was one of the most surprising things to me about YouTube, people messaging me and, and saying certain things. And ever since that meet and greet we had, the first meet and greet last year, you know, this has kind of overwhelmed me emotionally a little bit because I never set out. I'm not Charles Barkley. I'm nobody's. I'm, I'm not trying to be anybody's role model. But for people to come up and just show that love, I do appreciate everything that they say, everything that y'all do, and I just want to say thank you. And also, you can find me on Tuesdays amongst all of that nonsense with my man, Mr. Galloway, on Electric Relaxation with Mr. Galloway, talking all things hip hop especially old school. We just did, just did a video, a live stream on Flage. And people really seem to love that video because, you know, we spoke about the sports aspect of it. We also spoke about her musically and her upbringing. So make sure you head over to Mr. Galilee's channel, check us out, see what we got going. Like we have content for everyone, no matter what you like, we have content for everybody. And once you get into the community, you just suggest stuff to us. We'll make content about that as well. Cause we are for the people. Aren't we, Bradley? Uh, I'm just going to let you know that I just missed a match that had Bubba Dudley and then Snoop Dogg also in there for some reason. Uh, so it's time to go. I miss Bubba. Did you, he's still Snoop. wrestling. He's still wrestling. One of the Dudley brothers is still wrestling. He was he was a special guest referee. Oh. I did not know that was going to happen. And then Snoop Dogg was in the ring. Holding up a belt as well. I don't know what happened. So it's time to go. So what you're saying to me is once you time rewind to, it's it, time to go. When you rewind and watch it again, you're gonna find out exactly. I already what know happened. that it happened now. I'm not gonna watch it again. Thank you, Yolanda. Appreciate that. All right. So now we're gonna get up out of here. You wanna hit my sand, Bradney? No, I don't. I just I All just right. I want to hit and stream. Right. So once again, once again, appreciate you all. Thank you once again. And we will see you.